So exactly how does a clutch work? Firstly, let's go and see where it's located. Here is my car, currently no bodywork on it for easy access. And this thing here is the engine. And down here is the gearbox. I'll just make that a bit brighter so you can see. Uh, two cables there. This one does forwards and backwards when you move the gear stick. This one does side to side when you move the gear stick. And right in the middle, in between the two, if I make this a bit brighter, around here is where the clutch is, where the two meet, which is why it's so expensive to get a new clutch because access is very hard. There are four main components which make up a clutch. Most would say they're free, but I like to count the flywheel as part of the clutch because without the flywheel, the clutch is useless. But if you're going to a garage to get a new clutch fitted to your car, they're normally gonna only replace three components unless they recommend you need a new flywheel or you ask for a new flywheel. Here are the three main components. The first one is this, the clutch release bearing. As you put your foot on the clutch, this bit here comes out and actuates the pressure plate. This part here. Pressure plate has a diaphragm spring. And basically what happens is when you put your foot on the clutch, this bit here moves that way. So in this case, now it's upside down that way and pushes against these fingers of the diaphragm spring. And what that does is as these fingers go down, this metal disc, which is actuating your clutch, which is putting pressure on your clutch, actually goes the other way to your fingers. How that works is if you look at my finger, and pretend my finger is one of these diaphragm fingers, and let's say I've got a pivot point around here. If you push my finger down, it moves this part of my arm up. And the same thing happens with these fingers. As you put pressure on these fingers, there's a pivot point about where these rivets are, and it moves this metal part, which connects with your clutch friction disc, that way, disconnecting this metal part from your friction disc, allowing your clutch to be disengaged. And the friction disc, which everyone worries about when they're worried about clutch wear, is this part here. This is the friction material that gets worn out when you overheat the clutch. And we roughly know what it's made out of, but not exactly because manufacturers like to keep their exact compound close to their chest for competition reasons. So now I want to show you how it all comes together. I have a wheel bearing and a brake disc. This is gonna represent the flywheel of the engine. It's not a flywheel, but it will represent it in this demonstration. And an engine can't normally spin slower than about 10 times a second. I can't spin that this fast, but that will be spinning really, really fast, which is one of the main reasons why you need a clutch because you can't have your wheels spinning that fast all the time. And this is the friction disc with this splined spigot here. And your shaft goes into that spigot. And this shaft, my finger is the shaft, goes to your wheels essentially. It goes through the gearbox to your wheels. So whatever this does, your wheels are gonna do most of the time if you're in gear. And of course, as the engine spins, that's gonna spin your wheels. It could slide along there though, couldn't it? But how this grips the flywheel, you see it's got the friction material on both sides, is that gets clamped onto the flywheel with the pressure plate. That's why it's called a pressure plate. This bit here puts pressure onto this part of your friction disc, which then sandwiches your clutch friction disc against this pressure plate and the flywheel, meaning when the engine turns, your wheels are gonna turn. My hand here representing the wheels of your car. How does this disengage though? To disengage your clutch, you'll press the clutch pedal all the way down to the floor. That will make this part of the release bearing go that way, putting pressure on the fingers, whoopsie daisies, putting pressure on the fingers of the diaphragm spring that way. And if you remember, if these fingers go down, in turn, this metal part of the pressure plate will go up, releasing pressure off of the clutch disc, the friction disc, this part here. If you're in gear, whatever this does, your wheels do, which is very important. So what I can do, if I lift this up a little bit and put little bits of wood underneath it, there, and this one, uh, and get it in, there, good, that's about right. You can see now that if these, this, is, this represents the clutch being disengaged. So these fingers will be down and this 
metal plate will be up. There won't be a gap that big. It'll be a very, very small gap, but I'm doing this for demonstration. So essentially what that means now, and this is the whole point in the clutch, is now your engine, this is your engine, remember, which is connected, this is bolted together, can spin without your friction disc, your clutch plate spinning, which is really important because now your engine can continue to spin whilst your wheels stop. That's one of the most important parts of the clutch. One of the main reasons why you have a clutch is because when you stop your wheels from spinning, you don't want your engine to stop. That'll be a stall. When you stop your wheels from spinning, which is your clutch, remember, that's essentially your wheels, your engine can carry on spinning happily. When you come off the clutch pedal, when you lift the clutch up, what happens is pressure gets placed again against the friction disc, the flywheel and the pressure plate, push down, clamping force is quite strong, so there's no slippage there, and then they all spin together and your wheels spin. When you're at the bite point, that's when they're partially connected, so there's only a small amount of pressure on this friction plate. Not enough so that it's completely locked up, but enough so some force or partial amount of force is going through to your wheels. And of course, because there's slippage here, it's gonna heat up. And the longer you do it for, the hotter it gets. And if it gets too hot, then it will cause excessive wear. Well, that's essentially how the clutch works. Now I'm gonna talk about how it wears out or how you can wear it out prematurely. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is this, the release bearing. And you can wear one of these out prematurely by doing one of either two things using your foot, not your foot, using your clutch pedal as a foot rest. If you're just resting on the clutch a little bit, that's pushed up against the pressure plate, that's under load, that is taking strain, it's not designed to take all the time. Or if you're leaving it in gear with the clutch down for long periods of time, say in traffic or traffic lights, instead of using neutral when you can, that's just putting more hours of wear into it. They're not the best built things, they all have a little bit of play in them, if you can see there has a bit of play, it wiggles about a bit, it does spin. And these cost anywhere from 15 pounds to 100 pounds. This is about 100 pounds because it's a concentric slave cylinder. So the hydraulics are built into it, which I like because it gives really good clutch pedal feel, but they are a bit more expensive and you don't get to choose which one you have. You have to have the one that your gearbox is designed to do. And yeah, yeah, 15 pounds to 100 pounds, not much, but a minimum 300 pounds to get to it because you've got to take the gearbox out. This sits nestled in the bell housing of your gearbox. You've got to take that out to put it in and that does take some man hours. The next thing that can wear is the pressure plate. If this wears out quickly, it's probably not your fault because there's not a lot you can do in terms of driving to damage this, I suppose. If you're, again, resting on the clutch pedal all the time, you're putting uh, pressure on these fingers of the diaphragm spring, and that could wear them prematurely, but I don't think you're gonna damage them um, before you damage this. I think this would be the first thing to go. So if this fails, it's probably because it's defective. It's not a very good one manufacturing defect, which actually this has. I'm gonna have to return this because one of the leaf springs in it looks bent and I'm not fitting it to the car. Or it was fitted incorrectly or dropped or something when it was being fitted. If you fit it incorrectly, then it's going to fail and it can take a gearbox with it. So make sure whoever fits your clutch knows what they're doing. <clears throat> now, the thing that everybody talks about, the friction disc. The friction disc can wear when you're at the bite point for an extended period of time. It's not very thick, um, so you don't get much material to wear through but it generally doesn't wear much if you're just lifting the clutch to the bike point for a few seconds, say moving away in first gear or pausing on the bike point a little bit to smooth out your gear changes. These generally don't wear. They wear when you give lots of revs and lift the clutch to the bike point, say over 3000 RPM, bike point is gonna overheat instantly and it's gonna get thinner. Or if you're holding the bike point for a long period of time, say to keep the car held on a hill, then it's gonna get hot, then it's gonna to start to break down and wear. But generally speaking, this material doesn't really wear much at all. It will do a tiny bit, of course, during normal operation, pausing on the bike point, say 1500 RPM, whilst you let the wheels speed up if you're moving away in first gear. If you try to avoid wearing this by not holding on the bike point and smoothly moving away, 
you're going to start putting shock through your car. If you're moving around in a shocked, jerky fashion because you think you're saving your clutch, you're probably causing more damage. And that is how my clutches die. My clutches don't die because of this friction material. When I'm done with this friction material, oh, sorry, not the friction. When I'm done with my clutch because it's defective now, it's no longer working, the friction material has barely been used. It's Normally, it's still got 80% of its life left in it when I've measured new to old, and I have done that several times. What wears is this shock mechanism. This gets put under load if you lift the clutch up too harsh, you stall the car, drop the clutch, you know, drop it quickly, and your car goes boom like that. This gets put under a lot of pressure, and I find this tends to be the thing that goes first before other components of your car that it puts under strain, say your engine mounts or your gearbox, all those things get put under strain when you drop the clutch or change gear badly. But this tends to wear first. And when this wear, this spigot here starts to get played. Now there's no play in this one, it's like new, it is new, so I can't move that. But when mine have been used by learners and they've nicely, but you know, I am a driving instructor, this is what I do, they've abused my clutch this starts to get play and when you're in neutral with the clutch up, you'll hear a sound and I don't like that sound. And also the pedal starts to feel less smooth around the bite point. It can be a little bit more, not quite notchy, but it's not linear. So I replace the clutch to make sure my learners have the best clutch possible for their learning. It could probably go a lot longer and I know it would go a lot longer because I've driven plenty of cars where I know the owner have had a clutch just like that and they've had it for a year, two years, three years, and they're still driving around like that. But I obviously want the clutch to be in perfect condition to make learning easier. Here is a video of my release bearing, probably about three years ago. You can see the grease has spewed out of it and there's a lot of play in it. By the time it got to that stage, the pedal felt very bad. It was very notchy and I just replaced the clutch kit. Again, friction disc, perfectly fine. Barely any wear in that at all. You still had all these grooves in it, nowhere near the um, rivets, and that's a good point actually. You don't really want to let your clutch wear so much that it gets to the rivets, because then you end up damaging your flywheel as well, which is another reason why, if I think my clutch is getting a bit dodgy, I'll tend to replace it before I let it wear completely out, because then I get to keep my flywheel, and I have to replace that too, because they can also be quite expensive. And here's another video of my friction plate, and you can hear this sound, I'll let you hear this. And you hear that there's rattling it's because this spring-loaded mechanism has been put onto loads of strain. There's play in the spigot now. And that's just from new drivers changing gear badly, dropping the clutch, putting it into fourth gear instead of second, and just making the car or the clutch struggle. This clutch that I'm replacing is actually not from my learner car. This is from my personal car, and I call it my fun car. And I reckon I have burnt the friction material on that one because the clutch pedal is quite high. And although not all clutch pedals get higher as they wear, this one does because this pressure plate isn't self-adjusting. Some pressure plates self-adjust so that as this friction disc gets thinner, the metal part here moves out more so that your bite point always stays in the same place. That's the case on my learner car, but not the case on this one. Clutch pedal's a bit high, and I've really abused it over the last four years. I've done some pretty bad things with it, just because it's my fun car, I like messing about in it. I do take it on track days. Uh, I do like very hard starts, 5,000 RPM, lift the clutch up to get the best start I possibly can. The engine doesn't have a lot of torque, so you need a lot of revs to get that really fast start. So as I'm there, as I've got lots of parts apart, as I'm doing a bit of a restoration, I thought I may as well just swap it out anyway. But it'd be interesting to see how much, how worn the friction material is compared to this. I'm really hoping it's not down to the rivets. I don't think it is, because the flywheel is a special lightweight flywheel and they're quite expensive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this new one and compare it to the old one with the caliper. And it's saying it's 8.3 millimeters thick. That doesn't mean you've got 8.3 millimeters of use. I always, I determine how much use you can get out of a clutch by these grooves. So I figure out how deep these grooves are on each side, add them together, and that's how much usable uh, material there is. Well, I've had a lot of time to think during lockdown and I've figured out how to time travel. So here I am in the future, having replaced the clutch, which was a complete pain because mid-engined car. 
I'm still actually putting parts of it together. So here's the old clutch. I'm gonna cut straight to the part you're probably interested in, and that's this friction material. How much has it worn? It was 8.3, I remember it being. What is it now? Let's have a look. Let's just measure that. Mm -hmm. 7.3. So I've used a millimeter of clutch, which is a lot. I measured these grooves to see how deep they were on the new, on the new clutch. So I know how much wear you get on each side and they were a mil deep, a millimeter deep. So you get a millimeter on each side. That's two millimeters in total. I've used one millimeter, which is about, well, it's pretty much exactly 50% of the available friction material to use. However, the middle bit, the spline that goes on the gearbox, that is in good order. There's really no play in that. This is what the pressure plate looks like when it's bolted to the flywheel. If you were to unbolt the pressure plate, the clutch would fall out because the clutch friction disc is behind that pressure plate. And this is the release bearing, which is connected to the gearbox. When you attach that gearbox to the engine, that release bearing will be in contact with the pressure plate. And with this design, it does actually look like the release bearing is permanently touching the pressure plate, although not under load. It will only be under load if you're resting on the clutch pedal and actually pushing it into the pressure plate. There is actually a groove on the release bearing and on the pressure plate, there are, well, it's not really a groove, it's, you can say it's a bit shiny, a bit more worn. And the reason why that has happened, give you a closer look at that there, you see the different color, where the release bearing connects to it. And the reason why that's happened, as far as I can tell, is because when I rev the engine, the engine revs very, very fast. This will spin very quickly. Whoops, just put clutch dust in my living room, never mind. Um, and because this is, this hasn't really got much grip. So this will spin very quickly, which of course will mean this will take a bit of time to catch up. So there will be some slippage between these fingers and the release bearing. I thought this clutch was about 30,000 miles old because the person who built the engine told me that. I didn't actually buy the engine off him. A previous owner bought that engine off him and had it installed in the car. I got in contact with the guy who built the engine and he said, amongst other things, that it had a new clutch. Now he built quite a few engines for these cars, so I wouldn't be surprised if he just got that wrong. It does look original. There's a date code on here which goes back to before the car was actually made. So I would say this is an original clutch with 60,000 miles on it. And that 60,000 miles of which quite a lot of it has been abuse because it is it's a fun car and it gets to 60 in four seconds if you get a good start with lots of revs. So it's had quite a lot of abuse and it's still, there's half the material left. Although there are signs of damage where I have overheated it. This is why doing this is a bad idea. I don't recommend you do this. You're much better off looking after your clutch and making it last the length of your, your car. And you can see where I have damaged it because if I get this a bit closer, you can see there's hot spots on the pressure plate. And although the pressure plate does often look a bit more like this, having a big hot spot like this and this, I'm not used to seeing those, you know, even on my learner cars, because my learners generally don't overheat the clutch. Very rarely do they do that because they're not trying to do really hard starts. They might accidentally press the gas too much. But if they are going to do that, if, if they press the gas loads, I'll dual control, I'll dual control the clutch down because I don't want them giving 4,000 RPM and touching the bite point on a regular basis, day-to-day -day teaching, so that would certainly kill my clutches quite quickly. The amount of fast starts I do, drive the car once or twice a week, and even then I don't do it every time I drive the car, so it probably gets, I don't know, 25 hard starts a year. And 25 hard starts a year for four years, I don't think it's done too badly actually, especially when you can sit a a Pagani Sonda, you can do like three full bore standing starts before you kill your clutch. It's not done too bad. It's not really a Pagani though either, is it? Having said all that, I've had the car four years. 
I don't know how the previous owner have has treated the clutch. I've done not that many miles in it, about 11,000 miles, I think, something around there. So it's 11,000 miles of me and 49,000 miles of someone else. And I have no idea how they've treated this clutch. So I could have done, to be fair, uh, you know, most of this damage myself. I don't really know. Um, there is somewhere in the release bearing, and this is definitely an original release bearing. There's absolutely no signs that it's been removed before. Uh, and you can see here, it does go up and down and wiggle about quite a bit, which the previous one did have a bit of play, but nowhere near that much play. So it's well worth changing this whilst you're changing your clutch. It's a hundred pounds, but it was a horrible job. hundred pounds, get that done. You don't want that failing and having to take the whole thing apart again just to do that. One of the reasons why I'm making this video is because I do get comments saying that if you hold the clutch on the bike point as you move away or as you change gear, you're going to burn out the clutch prematurely. RIP to the clutch is one of the comments I sometimes see. But if you've experienced clutch wear yourself and you've gone through many clutches, you would know different because my clutches have never used more than 20% or my learner car clutches have never used more than 20% of the friction material before they're killed. The reason why my clutches die or dying and killed is probably a strong term, get excessively worn to the point where you get funny noises and funny pedal feel. The reason why that happens to my clutches is precisely because people don't, learners don't hold the clutch on the bike point. Of course they don't, they don't know how to drive yet. They're with me to learn how to drive. They'll come up off the clutch, way too quick, way too high, straight through that bite point, big shunt through the car. That's gonna damage other components of your engine and your clutch as well. It puts particular pressure on the engine mounts as that engine tips. And depending on how strong your engine mounts are, depends on whether or not you're gonna have problems. All cars are different. Some are stronger in other areas than others. The way I teach people to drive in my particular car, if they were to change gear smoothly and to move away smoothly, the clutch would last 200,000 miles because after 40,000 miles, it's only 20% worn. So you do the maths, 20% up to 100%, that's five times, five times 40 is 200, 200,000 miles before the clutch friction material is worn out. And I'm betting that before that clutch friction material is worn out, even if you were careful, that dreaded release bearing, which isn't particularly good on my learner car, is quite a rubbish one, would have worn out anyway, and I need a new clutch anyway. I think the reason why most clutches that get replaced because of friction material wear is because of hills. Holding the clutch on the bike point on a hill for a length of time is really bad for the clutch. You do it for three seconds, it's not gonna to get too hot. But if you sit there waiting at traffic lights or waiting at a T-junction to emerge on that bike point for five plus seconds regularly, the clutch is gonna get hot. And when it gets hot, it starts to wear quite quickly. I myself haven't done that to a car, but I do know people who have worn out clutches and that's the only way I think it could have possibly happened because they don't do hard starts. Um, it hasn't got loads of miles on it, but they're using the bite point to hold the car on the hill. It's also worth noting that not all cars are the same. Now I said 200,000 miles in my learner car, but there are other clutches in different cars that last more or less. A good example would be, and I don't want to rubbish the brand, Alfa Romeo 147 GTA. That particular car is known for eating its clutches. You've got to be careful to get 50,000 miles out of that clutch, but that's not normal. Well, I hope the video helps. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and do check out my sponsors in the description, Collingwood and Confused.com. Collingwood are great if you want to drive a friend or family member's car because you won't be affecting their insurance policy if you use Collingwood, which is really handy and takes away some stress. And Confused.com is really good for new and inexperienced driver because they're really competitive for new and inexperienced drivers. They're actually good for everyone, but I've found when I've done my comparisons myself, confused.com generally came out really good. 
If you use the links in the description, that will help the channel and there is a benefit to you if you use the Collingwood link. If you want to see my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio.